Hey guys, my name is Julia and I'm one of your teen services librarians over at the main library on Goodwood. We're back and this week we're doing things a little bit differently. Today we're actually just going to talk about a couple of different codes and ciphers that exist in the world, uh, but we've got a kit for you at the main library and it would be great if you picked it up because there's a whole bunch of things in it for you. Uh, so we've got like an invisible ink pen, a flashlight for Morse code, uh, example codes to work through, and a special challenge that if you complete you will win something. So please pick up your kit today, but in the meantime let's get cracking. All right, first up, let's talk about invisible ink. Uh, the reason you would want to write something in invisible ink is so you could hide it in plain sight. And if you hide something well enough, you might not even ever actually have to encrypt it. And there's three ways that invisible inks usually work uh, in order to become visible, and that is they react to heat, they react to some kind of chemical, or they react to UV light. <laughs> Today we'll be using UV Invisible Ink. UV Ink becomes visible under ultraviolet light due to fluorescence. And if you picked up a kit, you should have a UV Ink pen in it. All you have to do is open it up, write whatever you want your message to be, and then in order to see it, you just expose it to UV light and you can use the uh, handy light on the pen to do that. Or you could uh, use a black light or any other uh, method you can safely conceive of. Okay, so one of the earliest ciphers out there was the Caesar cipher, and it's actually created by uh, the Roman Emperor Julius Caesar, and he used it to encrypt all of his messages. The way it works is pretty simple. You just shift the alphabet a certain number of spaces, and then you write your message with that new alphabet. Anyone who wants to read what you've written has to know how far you shifted the alphabet, and then they just shift backwards to decode. If we moved everything two spaces to the right, we would get something that looks like this. Up top in black is our regular alphabet, and underneath that in green is our shifted alphabet. So you can see we started A here, but in our shifted, we just move a uh, two spaces over to the right. And to write messages out, you just look underneath the letters that uh, you want to write and write what's actually there. So if we were gonna write uh, the message, hey, we look under our H and see there's an F. And then we look under the E and see that it becomes a C. And then if we wanted to, uh, the Y becomes a W. Uh, so anyone decoded our message would just do the reverse and look the opposite way. Okay, so Morse code was invented by Samuel Morse in 1844, and it was basically like 1800s texting. Uh, the way it works is that every letter of the alphabet and the digits 0 through 9 are assigned a pattern of dots and dashes that can then be signaled. Uh, for example, the letter V would be dot 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 dash. Uh, the dots are short and the dashes are long. Originally, this was done by disrupting an electric current on a machine that was made for this called a telegraph, but there's a whole lot of ways you can use Morse code, tapping a pen, flashing a light, blinking, etc. Um, Morse code is still used pretty widely in the military and in radio communications. All right, in 1800s Russia, there was a group of people called the Nihilists, and they encompassed a wide variety of people. Some of them were just not cool with living in an absolute monarchy, and some were just mad at literally everything in society. Uh, but due to a lack of free speech and to several Nihilists engaging in illegal or really, really bad things, this cipher was invented in order to encrypt messages between them. All right, so hang with me here because this is gonna be a few steps. Uh, the first thing you want is a five by five grid and you're gonna take that grid and fill it up with the alphabet all scrambled up. Because we have 26 letters in English, you're gonna to have to drop one of them because you only have 25 spaces. Uh, Q, J, and X are the, usually the most popular ones to drop because they aren't used very much. And we are dropping J today. And the way this works is all of these letters in the alphabet now have a number that goes with them. And you find that number by picking out the row it is and then the column. So if we wanted to find S, we would go to row one, and then five, and we would get 15 equals S. Same thing if you wanted to do uh, the letter P, row four, column two, 42 equals P, and so on. Uh, after you've got your grid all settled, you need a keyword. And today we're just gonna use Grozny for ours. Uh, Grozny is a city in Russia. And the next thing you wanna do is find your message that you wanna encrypt. So our message is going to be in Moscow. And um, what we want to do first is write the number equivalents of all the letters underneath uh, each individual letter of our message. So I actually uh, went through and changed every other letter uh, to green in our message, just so it's a little bit easier to see what's going on here. Uh, but after you do that, you want to go ahead and write your keyword 
uh, underneath all of the letters, repeating that word as necessary. So it's going to look like this. After you do that, you want to actually add uh, the numbers that correspond with the letter to the numbers that correspond with the keyword. So if we were going to start this out for our first letter, we'd add 25 and 24, and that would give us 49 for our coded message. And we would continue on for our next letter as well. So we would get 58. So at the end of it, this would be our final coded message. And if someone gets this message and wants to decode it, all they have to do is go through, line these letters up with the keyword letters, and then subtract them. So if you take away 24 from 49, you're going to get at 25, and so on. Okay, so the Visionaire Cipher is the most complicated thing we're going to talk about today, and I will try to be brief. The Caesar cipher is not actually very secure. Every language has letters that come up more frequently than others, and in English those letters are E, S, and T. When you are looking at something encrypted by a Caesar cipher, it's not very hard to see uh, what letters are cropping up the most frequently, and then you can deduce the shift number from there, and the whole thing unravels very quickly after that. Surprisingly though, the Caesar cipher was the military encryption method of choice for over a millennium in the Western world, and it wasn't until the 9th century AD until the Arab scholar Al-Kindi pointed out the obvious flaw in its design. It took longer for something stronger to be created though, and the Visionaire cipher was the answer to this. It is actually a series of 26 interlocking Caesar ciphers that are then further encrypted with a key word. Okay, so the series of interlocking Caesar ciphers is called a tabula recta, and it looks something like this. Uh, the rows of this are for keyword letters, and the columns are for plain text or non-code letters. Uh, this becomes very important here in a minute. So the first thing you need is a keyword, and for kicks, let's just say our keyword for our message is going to be Vespa. And then you want to go ahead and decide uh, whatever you want your message to be. So let's say, uh, for example, we want our message to be Espresso Break. All right, so after you do that, you want to go ahead and you want to write your keyword underneath the letters of your message, uh, repeating as necessary. All right, and your next step is you want to go ahead and find your first letter of your message that you want to encode, which would be E over in the column, and then find the first letter of your keyword, which is going to be V, and you want to find where they actually line up together and it is Z. And you want to do the same thing as you go down. And when you get to the end of it, uh, you're going to have your encoded message. So ours would be this bit of gobbledygook right here. And if you received uh, an encoded message with a visionaire cipher, what you would want to do is you would want to uh, also write your keyword out across all the letters and then you actually want to go to the keyword row so for our first letter z on this to decrypt you go to the v for vespa your keyword find where the z is and follow it up and that will give you your plain text letter if you have any questions or comments about today's activity holler at us our phone number is 231-3770 or you can leave a comment on this video better yet pick up a kid at the main library and try out your hand at cracking our code challenge Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this and I can't wait to see you next time.